So I figured that this question would probably come up sometime soon just because of the video and the topics that I cover, but let's break this one down. So intentional weight loss. So you purposely saying, I want to lose 20 pounds is fat phobic. And you might be like, what? Oh my goodness. I'm not trying to be fat phobic, but you are. You're being fat phobic to yourself. Why do you want to lose 20 pounds? It's probably to fit into something smaller. It's probably so people treat you better. It's probably for all the reasons that fat folks are shamed simply for being fat. So by continuing to perpetuate that, right, seeking intentional weight loss, we are contributing to our fat phobic society. So that's why intentional weight loss is fat phobic. Let me know if you want to know more. All right, guys. So in this episode of Cuckoo for Cocoa Puff World, <laughs> we got to talk about this fat body. And I'm not characterizing her as this. She's characterizing herself as this, okay? I'm not calling her this. This is what she, she identifies as, right? She identifies as a fat body personal trainer, okay? Uh, she has a video that's going viral because she's claiming that all forms of intentional weight loss is fat phobic okay it is fat phobic to intentionally try to lose weight okay and i want to respond to this nonsense because once again okay we have some woke revolutionary right that goes on the internet uh pretending to be some type of expert and quite literally telling people the opposite of reality but i'm at the point where i'm fed up with these labels or more so i don't care anymore about these labels that these people try to throw on people who want to operate in reality and live normal healthy lives okay uh so again i, I want to respond to this because again this is just absolute nonsense but before i get in that speaking of uh health and fitness one of the best ways you can maintain your health and fitness is to make sure that you're getting all the vital uh, minerals that your body needs to perform efficiently and that is why i am extremely proud that the sponsor of today's video is organics nature you probably know that low energy is not supposed to be a part of your day to day and if you're experiencing low energy then that means that something's probably missing from your diet okay you're not getting the key essential minerals and vitamins that you need to keep your body functioning properly and organics nature has the natural solution with their sea moss based products sea moss has 92 out of 103 essential minerals that your body needs to function efficiently such as magnesium potassium iodine iron among others, combined with bladder rack and burdock root, you can expect even greater health benefit. Not only is sea moss easy to take, but it also comes in a convenient forms such as gummies, which I have here. Uh, I like these the best. Uh, and capsules made with all natural and organic ingredients so that you can feel good about what you're putting inside of your body. For a limited time only, get 50% off your second CMOS product when you purchase from Organic Nature using discount code BOGO50 at checkout. And make sure that you tell them that I sent you by using the link in the description below. And don't wait because your health is your wealth. All right, guys, so without further ado, let's get into it. Another great question, this person is asking if there is any time in which intentional weight loss is not fat phobic. I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the times, if you are intentionally losing weight, it is fat phobic. Wow. 99.99% <laughs> of the time, if you are intentionally losing weight, it is fat phobic. Now, what is the definition of a phobe, right? It's to be afraid of something okay um now i mean sometimes phobes are good right in certain situations maybe it's a good thing to be a fat phobe okay i don't think that losing weight makes you a fat phobe but if you want to stretch it there and say that you're afraid of fat then maybe that's a good thing maybe i am a, a fat phobe maybe i am fat phobic okay maybe i should just embrace that label as fat phobic okay at this point because um again any type of um 
you know, belief in reality, like, for example, when it comes to men and women, uh, you're a transphobe, right? So when it comes to the subject right here and the belief that, hey, you know, maybe not being obese or morbidly obese or overweight, maybe that's not a good thing. They call you a phobe because people who are morbidly obese and overweight want to feel good about being morbidly obese and overweight and ignore all the health problems that comes along with it to pretend like it doesn't exist when it, it clearly does. I mean, I, I think that's what's going on here. But, you know, if it makes me a fat phobe or fat phobic to, to you know, intentionally lose weight, then I, I guess I'm just a, a fat phobe. I'm fat phobic. I'm not denying these labels anymore. I'm about to start embracing all of them. I'm leaving that point little zero one percent in case I am truly, truly wrong. But I mean, you're wrong, right? You're wrong. But hey, you know, again, there's no need to fight the labels anymore. Okay, I'm a proud fat phobe. Uh, I don't think I am. And here's the reason why. I'm not saying if you exercise and happen to lose weight that that is fat phobic. I'm not saying if you start a medication and you happen to lose weight, that is fat phobic. I am not saying that if you're going through any type of, you know, illness and that is altering your body in some way, that that is fat phobic. Okay, but what about, <laughs> what about if you have an illness, like for example, heart disease, diabetes, uh, and your doctor tells you that <laughs> you need to lose weight, you need to lose fat, uh, because your size, the amount of fat you have on your body is contributing to that disease that, that you have. It's making it worse. Is losing weight fat phobic at that point? <laughs> right. And if you want to define it as fat phobic, then is that a bad thing? Okay. Because if it is fat phobic, I don't think it's a bad thing. Maybe it's a good thing. <laughs> right. Maybe, again, we should all be proud fat phobes. Okay. I'm just saying. You know, one thing I, I will say that I love about conservatives. Okay. It's way more than liberals is that I know that there are conservatives that are overweight, that are obese, right? But when you tell a conservative that, hey, you know, being overweight and obese is not a good thing, conservatives don't boohoo whine and cry and say, oh my God, I'm overweight and obese. You shouldn't say that because it hurts my feelings. You know, most conservative, even conservative women too are like, you're right, <laughs> right? You're exactly right. This is a fact. Now, whether or not they choose to actually lose weight or to get in shape or to lose fat or whatever, that's up to them. But they don't deny the actual reality of the condition, right? That, hey, this is not a good thing. Now, they have the freedom to want to be fat, to be obese if they want to be, and that's fine. It's, I mean, hey, it is what it is. I would argue that you're, you know, um, causing the rest of society, uh, you know, problems, right, in, reg in regards to increasing health care costs and stuff like that. But, hey, that's your freedoms. One thing, again, I love about conservatives is conservatives don't get butthurt about reality. They just accept it for what it is. Liberals, on the other hand, they get butthurt and then they come up with mental gymnastics like this to justify uh, things that are not grounded in reality. Again, this is so true when it comes to so many subjects uh, that we talk about in politics. I'm saying when you are intentionally exercising to lose weight, altering your diet to lose weight, doing any activity intentionally to lose weight is fat phobic and the reason why is because you are intentionally attempting to make your body smaller to fit into what narrative the narrative that smaller is healthier well i mean generally it is right generally it is i mean that statement is generally true now like any statement or any condition, if you take it to the extreme, like, for example, if you become anorexic, yeah, that's not healthy. That's not good. But generally speaking, if you have less fat on your body, again, not to the extreme, <laughs> right, uh, then, yes, you're, you're going to tend to be healthier. You're going to live longer. You're going to have better health outcomes. And this is just a fact, right? This is just a fact. Just because it hurts your feelings doesn't make it not true. Even though we've already discussed why that's not true. <laughs> it is true, though. It is. Generally speaking, it is true. It is 100% true. Again, these people are not, they're not grounded in reality. This is the people that we're dealing with. We're dealing with people who are not operating in reality. It's, it's insane. I know there was another comment on this video that said something along the lines of, when I'm lighter, I don't have as many issues with my mobility. And that may be a correlation correlation but it doesn't necessarily mean that extra weight is a causation oh my god 
Wow, how can you be this dense? Again, this is somebody that is in complete denial, okay, about reality, okay? And they just want the world to be what they want it to be instead of just accepting it for what it is. She's literally making the argument that, you know, you big people, uh, you have less mobility. And I'm not, it might be because you're bigger. Right? It might literally be because you're so big that you can't move as much, right? You physically can't move. It might be that. But, you know, it, it might not be. It might not be. And it's like, bro. Again, this is straight up denial. Straight up denial. Especially if you are not in care of somebody like a physical therapist that is specifically certified or has previously practiced physical therapy with a fat body. And I say that because as a personal trainer with a fat body, I know that movements impact people differently based on their body size, type, shape, mobility, a million things. As a personal trainer with a fat body, again, I'm not sure what gym is hiring her, right? What clients are, you know, signing up for her services, her advice, but if you are, again, I got questions. I got questions, man. Uh, but who knows? Maybe there are people because, again, there are people that want to feel good. They want to feel good about, you know, being fat and being overweight, um, not living in reality. So they'll go out and hire somebody that's also just as delusional as they are to, um, you know, help them achieve their goals. And then they, they probably never achieve their goals because, again, they're hiring people who clearly have no idea what they're talking about. So pretty much no. There is no time in which intentional weight loss is not fat phobic. And that's just kind of the way it is. <laughs> Another great question. In Google for Coco Pub land, that's the way it is. Incredible stuff, man. You heard it here first from a fat bodied personal trader. Again, not my words, her words. Uh, if you intentionally try to lose weight for any reason, um, you're fat phobic. And with that being said, I guess I'm a proud fat phobe i'm probably gonna make a shirt right that is gonna tell the world how fat phobic i am because i think this is this is a new movement we need a movement of you know fat phobia being like a, a, the thing right I, i'm a proud fat phobe okay i'm proudly afraid of fat okay if that is what will motivate people to go out and lose weight to live longer to be healthier um then hey you know what? Maybe, again, this is a good thing, right? Fat phobia is a good thing. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective.